Well, hello again, YouTube. Uh, time for another one of my blockbuster 12 hits um, rambling uh, reviews. On this, the Epiphone Jack Cassidy Signature Series Bass in um, limited edition uh, silver burst finish. Now, um, again, this review is aimed at someone who might be mulling over a buying decision around the Jack Cassidy Bass, may have a few questions. That, uh, like I did when I was uh, when I was buying it, that I couldn't easily get answered uh, elsewhere online. Plenty of videos of um, of Jack Cassidy himself. One or two videos of this particular bass being played. Um, not much by way of explanation of the features. So again, it's that kind of a review. If you're looking for entertainment, um, twiddly fancy bass lines, or a lesson in in how to slap or anything like that there, then you're really in the wrong place. This is a product review. Um, I'm a bit of an accidental bass player, I have to confess. I've only been playing for a little over a year. Uh, accidental because um, the band that I play in, which is Classic Rock, uh, covers band, Grounds for Divorce. Check out our other videos and our Facebook page if you're interested. Um, our band already had two guitarists, two very accomplished, very... Um, uh, talented guitarists and no space for little old me. So to go along with my vocals, uh, guitar is my main instrument, uh, I got given a bass and said uh, there you go, go away and learn that, we don't have a bass player. So that's what I did. Learned for a while, uh, ended up playing an Epiphone Thunderbird uh, 4 uh, for quite some time now, love that, I'll do a separate review on that maybe. Uh, then I turned 40 last month, I know my uh, youthful looks belie my age but I decided to push the boat out and treat myself to something a bit special. Uh, I'd seen one of these on a um, Jim Marshall um, uh, memorial video done by Paul McCartney and his band also on YouTube. And Paul McCartney's bass player was playing one of these in uh, the metallic gold finish, which is uh, which is very nice as well. And uh, I'd never seen one before. Looked at it, thought, "What the hell is that?" Did a bit of research, came up with the Jack Cassidy Signature Series bass was about to buy one and Epiphone started releasing little teaser photos of this in Silver Burst as a limited run, only 500 pieces made. Uh, my little 12 year old fella has a, an Epiphone SG 1966 reissue in Silver Burst, looks gorgeous so I thought I'd hold on, hold on and lo and behold the week after my birthday, so sort of mid-July, they released the Silver Burst. Uh, I've since looked online quite recently and I can't find anywhere now that has these in stock so I can only assume they've sold out. It's only the colour that's different to uh, the, the other uh, Jack Cassidy bases. Uh, the metallic gold's still available and the ebony, uh, the gloss sort of black is still available, both very nice. Um, but this one here um, just caught my eye and I'm glad I um, held out for it because it really is, I think, a thing of beauty. Now, um, I just want to run through one or two of the features on the base because as I said at the beginning, like me, you may have one or two questions or what does this do, what does that do, is it any good for this, is it any good for that, what, whatever. Uh, and then I'll, I'll play a few um, sound samples with different uh, pickup uh, configurations and you can uh, hopefully, it might come across half decent on this little microphone and on your laptop speakers which you know they're listening to this review on. Um, just about the finish first of all, as I've said, it's, um, it's a limited edition 500 uh, run uh, silver burst. Um, black around the edge fading into this lovely silver colour, cream binding on both the, the top and the back uh, and then black, uh, gloss black on the back and on the neck up here you won't see it but it says it's got the limited edition Epiphone Custom Shop uh, stamp uh, just here in, in a silver colour. Silver machine heads, I don't know much about bass guitars so they're clover style or shamrock style um, machine heads, I don't know if they're Grovers or if indeed Grover mate tuning uh, pegs for uh, bass guitars but anyway uh, Jack Cassidy signature on the headstock along with Epiphone Mother of Pearl um, uh, inlay there truss rod cover with the, the iconic E um, trapezoid Mother of Pearl inlays on an, uh, on a mahogany neck with a rosewood uh, fingerboard the rest of the guitar is maple so you have a solid maple top, uh, I think it's laminated maple back and sides, um, you have the, 
uh, black uh, scratch guard with again the little uh, E symbol uh, on it there. You've one pickup, but don't let that fool you because what a pickup it is. You've one pickup uh, that really is the heart of this instrument. That's what this instrument is all about. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, you've one volume, one tone control for that one pickup, and then here you've a vary tone, as they call it, selector switch, which is similar, I guess, to the vary tone switch on the Epiphone BB King Lucille uh, Signature Edition. Uh, that has more settings, this has three, but essentially what that does is vary the impedance of the pickup. Uh, it's a low output pickup, again, don't let that fool you. Um, and you can vary the impedance from 50 ohms, I suppose that's measured, and I'm not really sure. 50 ohms, maybe hertz, I've no idea. It goes 50 to 50, 500. Uh, and I'm going to talk about what that does in a moment, uh, what difference it makes. Now, uh, just a couple of observations on the finish and the makeup of the guitar. First of all, I'm led to believe this is Epiphone's flagship bass, top of the range. Uh, the finish on this particular guitar is practically flawless. In fact, only this evening, when I was getting ready for this review, did I notice a very, very slight little indent on the silver finish there. Um, even the finish around the, F, the edges of the F holes um, looks, uh, looks good to me. Um, the, uh, I should say the body, contrary to what you might believe, is not a true hollow body guitar. It's a semi-hollow, and essentially what that means is that the neck um, travels through, uh, there's a block under here of um, mahogany, you have to check that out, I'm not really sure what it is. There's a block that runs through here, um, I think, anyway, underneath that. Um, but the, the bulk of the body here is hollow. Just check that out actually, because I'm saying that now, I'm not entirely sure because I'm looking in here and there's a lot of daylight I can see, so uh, it's a semi-hollow body anyway, so look that up. Um, don't take my word for it. One thing I will say about the guitar, uh, it's a little bit neck heavy. Um, not in the same league as the Thunderbird, which was hugely neck heavy and just dived whenever you let go of it. And I had to have uh, the, the strap button moved from, for, from up here to on the back of the, the heel of the neck here. So that balances it perfectly, I'm pleased to say. So it's nowhere near as bad as that. It's just slightly off balance. Um, and I found this um, comedy... Uh, kitsch, uh, rock, over the top, wide strap uh, cured that pretty much. So it's, uh, it's probably a good idea to get a wider than normal strap. Um, again, I, from my review, the, the, the reading I've done on this particular guitar, I think most of the problem seems to be in the weight of the um, the tuning pegs, the machine heads, this end. Um, the fact it is a long scale neck uh, and such a light body that uh, it, it, it's naturally uh, uh, prone to doing that. You can replace these if you've a mind to do so with um, I think some hip shot ultralight tuners or something like that seem to be quite a popular mod uh, at around about 100 quid I'm, I'm not going to bother me ass I'll just stick with a wide strap thank you very much. Um, so that's it really on the on the finish. Um, it's quite a lot thinner than I was expecting. I was expecting a much deeper body for some reason in my mind so um, um, but it is a very, very large body shape, as you can see, particularly here. And again, from my reading online, one area where you may wish to think about is um, if, if you play normally, with your, as a lot of people do, including me, with your forearm resting here, this edge can dig in a little bit on your arm, so you may just need to adjust the angle of your, uh, of your arm when you're playing. There's a floating uh, bridge arrangement here, um, and the, obviously the... the uh, the output jack uh, just here, as you can see. Um, I don't think there's much else to say about it other than that. Um, so, uh, what's it like? Uh, well, I'm going to let you hear it in just a moment. Uh, just, I'll just do a few very basic bass lines so you, and then mess about with the control so you can hear the differences. And I'll play with both my fingers and a pick. Um, I will say this, that again, when I was reading up on this online, there's a lot of people commenting on how uh, this w woody, earthy tone that this particular instrument is meant to have. I wasn't really sure what that meant. Uh, and also the fact that it's very responsive to how heavy or how light your attack is on the strings. Again, I, I didn't really know what that meant, uh, only having really experienced the Thunderbird, which has just got this deep, lovely rumble to it the whole time. Now I've played it, 
I understand exactly what it means and so will you if you end up having a go on this particular instrument. I would highly recommend you go and give it a try first in a music shop um, because it might not be everyone's cup of tea. I love it. I've not yet played it with the band. I'm doing that tomorrow night uh, at a rehearsal so it'll be interesting to see how it keeps up with everybody else but for now uh, very very happy with it. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. Um, let's give it a rattle then. This is I'm putting this just for your reference. I'm putting this through a a Marshall um, MB4210 uh, bass stack, so it's 350 watt head uh, with two 10 inch speakers and a tweeter married up to a 15 inch um, extension cab with a, with a horn which gives a total output of 450 watts it's got two channels plus a blend, I'm, it's in a review of the amp but I'm just letting you know what I'm, uh, what I'm uh, uh, doing here the channel I'm going to use for this review is the valve channel. So it's got a, it's got a channel called Classic, which has a valve preamp, a solid state power section still, but it has a valve preamp, and it suits this particular guitar and the type of music I like to play quite well. It's quite um, quite a sort of vintage uh, 70s sort of uh, tone. Um, I'll play first of all. I'll flick this on because the valve just takes a few seconds to to warm up. I'm not sure what the sound's going to come out like on the on the mic there on the uh, camera. And I'll start off first of all, purely. Oh, we're in business. I'll start. Just turn that down a little bit. Um, start off first of all with the, um, just with fingers, just doing some scales or something. So it's more for the tone and the playing. So please don't leave lots of comments about make your shit or, or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm trying to demonstrate the tone, not the playing. So if you can concentrate on that, all will be well. As I said at the beginning, if you're at, if you're after fancy bass lines and. Uh, breathtaking musicianship, you really have come to the wrong place. Um, I'll start off at the minute with the impedance selector on 50, which is the lowest position. Um, best for a natural, mellow, acoustic tone, and indeed you could play this instrument very comfortably with an acoustic uh, guitar, like a duet or a trio or whatever, and it would fit in really, really well, even amped up. It's got a very nice uh, tone, so I'll just... Um, sort of acoustic tone. If I flick it up, I'm going to go all the way now to 500 so you can really hear the contrast between the two extremes. Um, the difference with the 500 is a real growl and a real bite. Actually quite distorted really. It really does uh, uh, growl and dig in, uh, particularly when played with a pick which you'll hear in a moment. So I'll just flick it up. Just uh, for reference I'll play the 50 and then straight to the 500 so you can hear the difference. So 50. distortion of it, good bit of bark and sort of dig in, but still still very natural, the tone. And the middle position, funnily enough, is somewhere between the two. Um, if the if the 500's a bit sort of over the top and a bit too in your face, and the 50's a bit too mellow, you may stick on the 250 setting. So I'll go from 500. So that's with um, fingers, obviously. Um, and up to 500, that was on 50 that, up to 500. sort of grit and growl off it, perfect for classic rock, I think, sort of 70s uh, rock, uh, absolutely perfect, very moody. Um, with, uh, I'll put it back to 50, 
playing with a pick now. Um, so you can hear just a bit more attack on the strings and how how it uh, responds to that. So. higher up the neck here so uh, back to 50 again nice soft natural sort of acoustic tone in here when you flick it up to uh, 500. Um, not much else to say, the, uh, yeah, as I said a few moments ago, I'll just flick this off a moment, the, um, uh, the, the bass is very, very responsive to how hard or how soft you play. Um, the the pickup really is amazing on this thing, especially designed for the instrument by Jack Cassidy. It's about two years in development. Uh, and he kept sending them back and sending them back to Epiphone and making slight amendments and tweaks and adjustments until he got the tone that he wanted. So this, uh, I have to say, this guitar, it's all about the tone with this particular guitar, even... Uh, oops, sorry about that. Uh, even unplugged, there's a nice acoustic tone off it, but... Um, it's all about the tone. You, you, you know, I've read a, a couple of reports of people saying, "Oh, yeah, I got my Jack Cassidy. Can't wait to switch the pickups and all this." Here, people like that are really missing the point. I think that it's all about the pickup. This particular guitar. Um, I bought it on looks alone because I'm a bit of a gear whore, I'm afraid. Uh, but when you get the thing plugged in, um, it really is a, a beautiful tone. Very versatile. Uh, as I said, you could play very comfortably in an acoustic duet or without overpowering it would sit really nice and mellow in the mix um, and when it's time to dig in or play a, a bit more growl and a bit more um, thump and distortion then it's well up for that well up for that so for anyone that's sitting there like i was thinking oh, would it be any good for rock though would it be a good rock bass i can tell you absolutely unequivocally uh, yes it would be perfect for classic rock uh, hard rock ACDC, Free, Thin Lizzy, anything like that there, anything with a good rumble and a good nice bite. Uh, I'm, I'm going to mess about with the uh, with the pickup selector here, the impedance selector on the pickup uh, with the band just to see what fits best. Probably go for maybe the midway position, I don't know, because the 500 might be a bit much. It really is like a, a variable boost switch is probably the best way to describe it, um, giving you a boost um, to, your, to your sound with just the one pickup. Very, very versatile. Very light, very comfortable to play. Neck on it's lovely. Gloss on the back of the neck, which not not everybody's taste. It can get a bit sticky, I suppose, with sweat. Um, not that I've experienced that yet. Uh, and very, very light the uh, for the size of it, and it is huge for the size of it, because uh, it 
because of it being hollow of course, very very light, as I said most of the weight is off this end which can lead, lead it to, to dip a little bit, so the wide strap does sort that out. And strap buttons just for your reference if you're that interested, uh, one on the end here and then one just on the back of the heel of the, at the back of the neck there. Um, not much else to say I don't think, uh, hopefully, you, oh the, um, yeah, the tone control on the pickup as well, this one here. Uh, again, makes a big difference. It's very, uh, very clear difference. It's got the little silver pointers. You probably can't see that just above here, where the uh, where the numbers obviously line up, which is quite nice, a bit sort of vintage. Um, so yeah, the the tone control does make a difference. Very noticeable. Um, and in closing, I don't think there's much else to say. Uh, if you find a silver burst, then good luck to you and well done. Uh, you're probably more likely going to end up with a gold or a black one. Uh, at the moment anyway, that's that's what seems to be available uh, and I think the gold, personally I think the gold is absolutely gorgeous as well. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to show you um, as part of the review and if this is where things are going to get a bit wobbly I'm afraid. Oh the, yes, sorry, sorry, one final thing, just to say the neck profile, it's quite, um, it's quite shallow the profile, it's not like a great big sort of um, round feeling to it, it's more like a uh, what would you call it, like a, a C profile is it, I, I don't really know, but it feels here very very slim it's, um, in, in the hand, um, particularly higher up the fret, so it's, it's not, you don't need big fat hands to play this instrument, um, it's very comfortable, the, the neck shape, whatever shape that is. Um, now, I'm going to show you this, so the video, apologies, will get a little bit wobbly for just one second, um, I got the Epiphone uh, hard case specifically made for this instrument. Um, now it's, I mean, it's a hard case. There's not too much to say about it really. It's fairly standard. It's got the Epiphone in gold just there, and then you've got uh, one, two, three, and then one on the back, four uh, clasps, specially designed for the base and cost about. I don't know, 80 quid or something like that, well worth it because I think the semi, although it's really well made and well put together, the semi hollow body would give me a few worries uh, more than maybe a, a solid body would, like the Thunderbird up there, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, fairly indestructible really, um, but the semi hollow here I think might be a bit more delicate, I don't know, so I prefer it in a hard case anyway, and uh, when I got this, so the case itself inside grey sort of velour trim. Um, the neck, uh, the neck end, the, the head end here, sorry, uh, does flare out at the very top, just here, gets wider to accommodate the big, um, the big uh, tuning uh, pegs. Uh, so the case is very wide at the top here, and what that also gives you, of course, is a very wide um, compartment there for all your gubbins, and, and a little indent here for where the neck sits, a little uh, rest here for where the neck sits. The um, cutout here for the strap pin, a sort of bulgy bit uh, here to keep the body uh, held firmly. A uh, little leather, little leather tag here to lift that up with, with an embossed. You probably can't see that, but an embossed um, Epiphone logo on the on the tag. Obviously the floppy handle, floppy uh, latches. If you've seen my review of the Hiscox case, I have to say that whilst this one will do. It's no, this in a different league entirely to the Hiscox case, so check that one out. I, uh, I did ring Hiscox before I bought the Epiphone case to see did they do one for the Jack Cassidy base, and unfortunately they didn't, and they've got no plans too soon either, and I really needed one, so I had to go out and get the Epiphone one. Uh, but it'll do, it'll do. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the, um, uh, the review. Uh, again, functional, not particularly entertaining. Uh, not great bass playing by any stretch, but... Hopefully it gives you some flavour of uh, what this instrument is about, what it's capable of, and um, and hopefully how it sounds. I'm not sure how that's come out. So that's the Jack Cassidy Epiphone Signature Series Bass in limited edition Silver Burst. I'm just going to flip it over and show you the Epiphone limited edition Custom Shop stamp. And then I'm going to go down the neck and show you through the F hole there is where your um, where your details are about serial number and model and all the rest of it. 
So beautiful bit of kit, ladies and gentlemen, highly recommended. Uh, and if you're anyway a half decent bass player, then uh, you should be able to make that sound uh, absolutely stunning. Um, not sure what it's like for slap, because I don't play slap. I'd like to be able to play slap, but I don't play slap. So uh, certainly finger style and picking, absolutely lovely. And yes, perfect for hard rock, classic rock, as well as very soft, mellow, acoustic stuff and everywhere in between. And I think you'll agree, it looks like nothing else on earth. Just absolutely stunning. Okay, YouTube, thanks for listening. And uh, there'll be another review along shortly. Bye now.